Welcome to Pure Picks. This is going to be the best bets edition. Joined here by my man Top G. How are you doing today? Doing great. Doing great. I'm ready for these best picks. Yes, sir. And we're just hopping straight out of the breakdown. So we are. We just got really excited. We want to show you guys some of our best bets and plays this week. Gerard, I know that you got some something good for our Pure Pickers, man. What What do you got for us this week? Yeah, so it's basically all two leg parlays and one anchor, one gigalock on this nice. card. So the gigalock on this card for me is Natalia Silva. I'm just gonna add her to every bet <laughs> that I have for this card. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> she's my gigalock. Nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, um, you know. Having anchor for a, a parlay and just you know, kind of your main theme overall could be uh, good at times and you know could be bad at times, especially if it fails. But if it hits, mm -hmm. then hey, you got some juice in some of those parlays. Uh, what's the first kind of play that you have um, that includes Natalia Silva? Uh, Silva, I'm assuming. So my first one is Silva and Gilbert Urbina. That's my first first one there. I just think uh, Urbina, he's he's just the more dangerous uh, fighter, and he he's got the size advantage over uh, over Radke here. And it is kind of scary if he gets into a grappling situation and possibly gets threatened with subs. But I just think there's a path for Urbina to just blast through Radke here. So that's my first parlay. Awesome. And that almost gets you even money uh, in terms of that parlay. You get a dollar, you get 94 cents back. So not too bad right there. Um, and uh, I mean, in terms of the units sizing for some of these plays, like what, what, especially for this first one, what are you thinking about here? I'll probably put a, a unit on this one just because I have other plays with Silva as well that I'm pretty confident on. Nice. All right, what's your other uh, kind of play or your next play uh, for the best bets? My next play here is uh, Silva and Madero's over two and a half. So, yeah, I'm playing the the over in Madero's fight, not picking a side on that one. Got it, got it. And that right now is a plus 133. Uh, why do you think this is fight is going to go decision? I know that um, initially when I saw this prop, it was plus 100, and you know, now it's minus 125. So obviously people are thinking similar to you. Why do you think this fight's going to decision or either lasting over two and a half? Yeah, at first I was picking Madero's money line and possibly seeing him get a finish. But the more I thought about it, Landon Quinones, he he can really grind out fights, even if it's just stand up, and he throws a lot of volume. He puts on a pace, and I'm not sure if either fighter can finish each other. I think this could end up being a close fight and going the distance, and it, this might be a, like a back and forth battle, is how I see it going. Got it. All right now, that is plus one thirty three. So, are you looking about a unit on that one as well? Yeah, I'm looking at about a unit on that one. All right, awesome. Uh, what's your next play that you have uh, with Natalia Silva there? Yeah, so my next play, I kind of just thought of this one towards the end of our breakdown. It's uh, Natalia Silva and Imavov over two and a half. So this one, I'm not, I got a, I, I found something to play in the main event and I think that fight can go over two and a half. Awesome. And that's plus 110 right now. So uh, a little bit over even on money right there. So it's going to be a five-round fight. What are your thoughts on why it's going to go over two and a half? Uh, I think for the first round or two, I think uh, the power of the lead say is going to keep Imovov honest for a bit. and. I think Imavov will kind of like not get too overly aggressive from the get go and look to pick his shots, look to see uh, the lead say slow down 
as the fight gets goes to the later rounds. And I can see Imovov possibly just just breaking down uh, Dolice round by round, uh, piecing him up, but possibly not not having enough uh, damage to put on uh, Dolice to get him out get him out of there early. So that's how I see this fight. And I thought the over two and a half is pr probably a safer bet than picking a side on this one. Awesome. Yeah. I like that too, over two and a half too. It's not, uh, not, uh, not bad right there. So it's minus 115. It opened up. Now it's a minus 160. So people have been going on that side as well. And for your uh, final play here, I think that you had a nice little bonus action for us. What do you got for us, pure pickers here? Yeah, this card, I think there could be a lot of, possibly a lot of underdogs winning on this card. And I thought I should at least choose one that I think had a good shot. So right here, I'm parlaying Silva with Pete Rodriguez. And I think he, he could get it done in this one. Nice. Uh, odds wise, by the way, if you do that, it's plus 301. So you're getting about a 3x on that part of it. Uh, obviously, we've already heard your insight on Natalia Silva. I mean, you pretty much put her in every place so far. What do you think about Pete Rodriguez? Why do you think that he is a good underdog here? Pete Rodriguez, I think I think that he'll be able to surprise Garimbo with his uh, explosiveness and, and power, especially early on. And for Garimbo, I'm I don't I don't I'm not too sold on his overall skill set. I think he's he still kind of leaves me wanting to see more. I, I, he doesn't really look that great to me even though he has a more well-rounded skill set and for me I I think Pete Rod, Pete Rodriguez is probably the more uh, dangerous fighter heading into this fight even on short notice and he he looked competent standing with uh, JDM for as long as that fight lasted. So I'm going with Pete Rodriguez on this one as my underdog here. Awesome. Well, yeah, best of luck on that one. Um, any other plays that you had and that you just thought about? I know that we went over some of the plays that uh, you thought were great as we discussed them, but anything else that popped up that you would like to, for us to know? Uh, possibly ones that I'm, I'm waiting on later in the week to see maybe weigh-ins or something is, uh, I'm trying to see how Drew Dober and Moicano look like in weigh-ins and I'm possibly going to play Moicano by sub later in this week, but I still got to see what happens. Nice. Moicano by sub. Last time I checked, it was plus 200. Now it's plus 175. So uh, maybe some some movements are a little bit of movements already happening for that side. Um, mm -hmm. From my end, I do have some plays as well. I want to talk over some of the plays that I probably won't include yet. So first one is Jamal Pogues over one and a half, and that's going to be entirely dependent on the scales for Pogues. I think that if he comes in, looks anything that he did before his last fight against Parkins and for that last weigh in, I'll be more inclined to put over one and a half there because I think that this will be a sloppy heavyweight fight over one and a half. That's the classic system play for me at least. So I think that both these guys will not really endanger each other at all. Probably gonna go to decision for that fight. Um so but I'm gonna wait until the weigh ins for that just see how Jamal Pogues looks for that weigh ins. Aside from that I do have um, a few plays that I wanted to go over, a few plays that I want to parlay together, actually. So first one is going to be the Azat over 2.5, minus 265. And then the second leg that I want to have as well is Kizraev, minus 150. And also, I am hopping on the Natalia Silva train with Gerard, minus 140, money line. So that's a solid three-legger for me. Right now, it's plus 197. So I think those are some nice juice dots. And obviously, we're getting those juice dots based off of Kizraev. So hopefully, he's the leg that cashes through, right? 
Now, I want to talk over some of these plays. Uh, As at over two and a half, we've seen so many fights from Charles Johnson at this point to know that this guy most likely is going to the decision. I don't know if he's going to win or not. Most likely he's going to lose. But most likely this guy will go to the decision. Uh, Probably going to be a split loss or something. Same thing with Azat. I mean, he fought Tyson Nam, UFC debut, instantly got a split decision victory. So I think that this fight is just going to go decision based off how these guys fight. They're both pretty durable. I don't see a finish either way. Next up, Kizrayev, money line. This will be the leg that we hope will cash. And the reason why I'm thinking of this is I just have not been impressed by Muradov overall. Mm-hmm. In his last few fights, I've been waiting for the opportunity to fade him. And I think that the time has come. I mean, Kizrayev, we haven't seen this guy in almost two years. So maybe that's why people are getting a little hesitant. But if you look at the topology, I mean, he, a lot of his opponents have been withdrawing. He's been withdrawing sometimes, but it's a lot of cancel bouts. I mean, I'll show you guys right now. This is a really interesting kind of track record that he's had so far. He's had one, two, three, four. He's had five cancel belts uh, in the last three years. So not a lot of people have been trying to fight this guy one way or another. Maybe he's pulling out or they're pulling out, but he's not getting a lot of action. And I think people are forgetting how good of a wrestler this guy is. Muradov, he's a, I think he's a decent wrestler himself, but most of that wrestling was really based off the last fight against Bar- Brian Barbarina. And that was, I mean... Brian Barberina is not anyone's image when they think of as a grappler slash wrestler in this division. Um, I think that this fight is just going to play out similar to the GM3 matchup. I mean, Muradov was like a big favorite coming into that matchup, I remember. And he lost in round two with a rear naked choke. So GM3 was able to take this guy down three times, eventually find the choke. Kizrev is a kind of choke machine. He, he has like some good submission chokes as well. Um, so I think something similar is going to happen to where his Ray is going to bring out his wrestling shoes, take this guy down and probably sub him. So I think I'm leaning towards that direction. And Natalia Sylvia, obviously I think that she is going to be the gig log for us this week. Um, so yeah, I'm throwing her in there. I just don't see how Vivi is going to be able to win this one. Uh, personally, I just don't see where she has the advantage she doesn't have the cardio advantage. I don't think she has the striking advantage. And grappling advantage, I don't think she has either. The one advantage she might have is just toughness. I mean, Vivi is really tough. It's really going to be really hard to finish her. But we're not banking on toughness to win the fights, right? I think that just because Natalia has the cardio to match her power and her quickness and all that. If she didn't have the cardio, then I'll be a little bit more wary. I like a Mike Malad, for example. <laughs> That's something that we should have caught. But I think this time, Natalia Silva has proven to have been able to survive three-round fights and win and thrive three-round fights. So that will be my play there. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, like Gerard mentioned, I think that there are some things that we're going to wait for the weigh-ins. Like I mentioned, the Pogues one, I'm going to wait for that the weigh-ins. Moicano is something that I'm going to wait to see in the weigh-ins as well. I, I kind of want to stick him in a parlay. I'm really itching to stick him in a parlay, but, you know, it's been kind of a long layoff for him, and he's come off injury, so might want to hold off on that. But other than that, that's pretty much it for the best bets edition from my end and Gerard. Um, Gerard, any last thoughts uh, before we wrap up and hop, hop off here? Um, no, nah, I think I think we're all set, ready for another UFC event. Get the juices going. Yeah, man, let's, let's rock and roll. Get that juice going get some good plays and really get some profit going. So other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll wrap up here. Best of luck, everybody. Pure pickers, pure picks nation. Thank you for supporting us, showing out, you know, liking, commenting, subscribing. We really appreciate it. That's something that, I mean, that's the reason why we do this is to just really try to give back to the community here. So best of luck, everybody. We're out.